Hey guys, it's Catherine. So today I actually have a really exciting video for you guys. I will be talking about my A5 size bullet journal system setup uh, for next year. I won't be physically setting this up, but I will just be going over kind of my sketch of what my bullet journal might look like next year. Um, I just want to give myself a few months to kind of think this over before I actually set up in my notebook, um, just in case. So I'll be going over that and I also have some blank sheets here so that I can kind of draw out the um, planner just to show you guys what I'm thinking of in terms of like the visual planning in the notebook and I also uh, took out some of my previous bullet journals just to show you guys kind of how I used it before and what this next setup is going to look like and um, I also purchased some stuff for next year um, in terms of journaling and also just like on the go planner so I'll be sharing that with you guys really quickly as well um, so let's get into it. Before we start, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video again. For those of you who might not have heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community offering thousands of classes on various topics ranging from creative classes such as creative writing, photography, illustration, to business classes for marketing, leadership, and management. I'm extremely grateful for Skillshare for making all of this content available and easy to access. I found this course recently by a Skillshare teacher I have been following, Productivity for Artists, Organizing Yourself for Success by Brooke Glazer. I'm really interested in learning how other creatives organize their tasks. I love that I can always find a class on Skillshare for whatever I happen to be curious about at the moment. If you don't happen to see a category for something you're interested in, just go to the search bar and you will most likely find what you're looking for. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so that means you will not have to sit through ads. So you can actually focus on learning wherever your heart takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, so before I get started with the A5 uh, bullet journal setup, I'm going to just quickly show you guys some of the other stuff that I purchased for 2022, just to get that out of the way because it'll be really quick. Um, so first thing I want to show you is the A5 size notebook that I got from the Nanami paper company. Um, they make these A5 size, A6 size, and B6 slim size the notebooks using Tomai River paper. And I, that's my favorite company, so notebook company. So I always purchase my Tomai River paper notebooks from them. And this is their A6 size. I love it because it is... Um, it, it uses Tomoe River paper, which is my favorite, and uh, the notebooks have a lot of pages in it. This has uh, 480 pages um, in each notebook, and that is about 100 pages more than Stalogy. And I like this over Stalogy because um, the notebook, when you purchase it, it opens up completely flat. So it's really easy to use, um, whereas Stalogy, you have to actually break the spine because it won't just open uh, really easily. This one, I actually broke the spine so it opens fine, but um, you do have to kind of go through that process. And I just prefer the Tomoe River paper over Stalogy paper. Um, that's just a personal preference. So this is my A6 size Nanami um, paper notebook, and this is my A5 size. This is the old... Um, Tomoe River paper and I think this one is the new one. You can see that it says new here. Um, I don't really, I can't really tell the difference so it really doesn't bother me. Uh, but I was using this one as a kind of daily um, brain dump type of notebook um, until I switched over to Hobonichi Cousin last year. And I don't really blame myself for not finishing it because last year was a mess and my my life has changed so much. So um, I had to change how I use my planner anyway. So that's my A5 size um, bullet journal that I'll be using for next year. And I'll be working from home, so A5 size is not too large. It's just going to be sitting on my desk, um, which is fine. And it has 480 pages, which is amazing. So that's my notebook that I'm going to be using next year. Now let me show you these two other things that I purchased from a local company. I wanted to support a more local company this year. So I purchased uh, from this company called Graphic Image. I already have some stuff from them before and I know their quality is amazing. So I decided to purchase from them. They're based in New York and I'm in New Jersey. So that's why I said local company. 
Um, so the first thing I'll show you is this little tiny planner. Um, this is just a dated small planner. It's, it's, um, it has this leather cover. So I have my wallet in this Jillio uh, Pocket Excel binder. And I have some notes pages here, which just blank um, notes pages. I have all my cards um, here in the back. And I just have a pen from Jillio. And I have this little notebook that kind of sits with my wallet. And this is a dated planner, for, also from Noti. Um, this one is just like this. And on the go, if I'm going to the doctor's and writing down appointments, I just use this one. And I also use this as like a place to write down notes on the go. Um, so that's really useful. This year, I'll be using this. So I like that it's red and it matches my planner. I always like to get little things in red. That, that's just my color. <laughs> and my little bag that I carry with me everywhere is also red. So everything matches and also my manicure. Um, anyway, so this planner, if you're interested, let me just quickly show you what it looks like. So on the inside, you just have the holidays. I like that it's all the American holidays, so I can have that on hand. Whereas if you get a Japanese um, Japanese planner, it would just have the Japanese holidays. Um, and then this one is the 2022 calendar overview, 2021 calendar, 2023 calendar, which is really helpful. And then you get this monthly overview. I like that these are lined because then I can kind of control my handwriting a little bit better. And I just think this is really neat and very clean. And then moving on, you just have a bunch of these um, weekly on two pages. And I, again, I also like that these are lined as well. And just it's just perfect. It's everything I, I would need in a on-the-go planner. And it comes with this ribbon bookmark, which is really fancy. And then at the end, you have some maps, record of personal data. And then you have a place to write down names and numbers, which is also helpful because I'm taking a call or something on the go. I can just quickly write down the name and numbers. Um, so it's perfect. It's really small. As you can see, I have a really small hand. This is a pocket-sized Jellio, so it fits perfectly there. So there you go. And um, let me show you. Well, actually, let me take this out because I won't be using it right now. don't want to get confused when I'm on the go. So this away. I also like that it comes in this little tiny nice box um, so it'll be good for archiving as well so put this back here and then I got this one for family journal so last year and this year I was using my Hobonichi cousin like a blank Hobonichi cousin just dedicated for family pho photo journaling but I was getting a lot of overwhelmed because as you know Hobonichi cousin has a lot of different sections and just like I know that I don't have to fill out everything but it just it's like this nag nagging feeling in the back of my head that I have to fill out every page or I'll get like a little bit stressed about it I mean not super stressed but you guys know what I mean so I actually decided to get this one which might seem fancy but it's actually it was actually on sale uh, from graphics image um, they, they're having a sale right now so you guys can go check it out if you're interested um, it was on sale and it's actually cheaper than a Hobonichi cousin so um, and it's not dated so I can use it for as long as I want and until I finish um, this entire notebook so let me open this So I think the cover is said that it was bonded leather. Um, so it's like this nice tan color. And it's actually meant to be a sketchbook, uh, which is perfect because the paper is thick enough. Um, and I feel like it would be nice to um, put pictures on it and it won't be so flimsy. And that was another problem I had with Hobonichi Cousin because obviously Tomoe River so my river paper is very very thin so even though i was sticking photos on using the sticker paper which is really thin thinner than um say an actual photo paper but it was still it still felt a little flimsy but this is actually sketch paper so it's going to hold up better 
and it's not dated so I'm not pressured to write in it every day. It will just be highlight photos from my family. Um, I will try not to obsess over like keeping every single photo, writing that every single memory um, just to kind of relieve that pressure for myself. So and it, it comes with this nice ribbon again also um, let me show you. So that's the ribbon, which will be nice. And I just feel like this is a better kind of archival sort of album for my, our family. And I can also like write down like the little stories attached to the photo, which will be really nice. And my kids can draw on it if they want to, because this is sketch paper and it will be more forgiving in terms of medium. Uh, so I'm excited about this. So next year, I'll finish out my current year in my Hobonichi cousin, and I'll be using this next year for family journaling, and then um, I'll see what happens after. And this is supposed to be a landscape kind of uh, format, but I guess you can also use it this way if you want to. It's just a form, uh, ribbon is going to be a little weird, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, family journal that I'm going to be using next year. Put that away. Now let's go to the actual topic of this video. Uh, let me first open this just in case you guys are curious. So we these notebooks always come with this sleeve cover which is quite nice because then you can I don't know it depends on how thick your notebook gets um, if you're just writing in it I think it will be perfectly fine to put it back in here when you're archiving your notebook um, but yeah so that's what this the notebook comes with and then it has this maroon colored um, cover and the binding holds up really really well um, that's the one thing I really trust um, Nanami with and you can see this is a cross field. It's not a dot. I, I personally don't care if it's a dot or cross, but I know some people care about that. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I just took this out of the box and you guys can see that this just lies completely flat like that. So that's what I love about this notebook. Um, so I'll be using this for the entire year next year. Um, I won't be getting a Hobonichi cousin, which is so crazy to think because I really thought I would be a Hobonichi cousin girl for the rest of my life, but I guess that's not true. So they always give you this A5 size blotting paper, um, which is amazing and it's just really nice quality. I love this notebook so much. So let me put this back. There's no um, bookmark or anything, but I'm... I think you can just tape on your own if you want to. Okay, so that's my A5 size notebook that I'll be using next year. So now let's go to the actual topic of this video. Um, so let me go through uh, line by line what I'm planning. So there are going to be 480 pages in the Nanami A5 size cross field notebook. I'm going to number all the pages, which I love to do. It's very therapeutic, so that's what I do. I just write down the number. Um, so the first four pages I'm going to leave blank because I want to just um, use that as a space to kind of summarize the year at the end of next year. So that's why I wrote important notes, review, and photos. I might put some photos up there. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit so you, can, you guys can see better. Here we go. So the first four pages are going to be blank pages. Now page five and six is going to be calendar overview. So it's going to have the over, overall calendar of 2022. So that's going to be that first page you see. And then the back side will be, um, let me see if I can sketch this out really quickly. So I'm just using my pencil here. So imagine, let's imagine this is my planner, which is approximately size like this. So um, that first page is going to be 2022 uh, yearly calendar. And then when you flip to the back side, this is going to have 2022. And if you guys purchased my planners before, this is how I, uh, if you guys purchased my planner inserts before, I don't, I no longer sell them anymore, but this is how I normally set up my yearly overviews. So I'm just going to write January, Feb, and then like, you know, 12 months, 
like that and then I'm just going to have kind of lined um, notes underneath so I can quickly write down um, like important dates for that year. So it's similar to this but this was set up for the following year so it will be very similar to this where I just kind of quickly write down uh, important notes uh, not important notes but important dates for that for 2022 so that's how I'm going to be setting out the first two pages and then um, page 7 until uh, through 17 is going to be yearly goals and tracker and if you're familiar with my channel you know that in my plans, pl in my planners I always like to have a, a chunk dedicated to yearly goal planning so let me just go over this first and then I can show you kind of how I use my current planner in terms of goal planning so you guys can get a better idea. So the first page is going to be overall vision for 2022. So say um, I'm done with this page and then this next page is going to be uh, my overall vision for overall vision, vision for 2022, right? And then I'm just going to write like close my eyes and what do I want my 2022 to look like to where I would see myself and kind of visualize where I want to be and that's what this page is going to be dedicated to and I'll probably decorate it with some stickers and make it look really pretty and special and then flipping to the next page I'm going to have a overall goal breakdown so here is going to be um, the following two pages over here and let me show you that example in my current planner. So, uh, so this is how I set up my current planner. Um, and it's going to look exactly like this. I like to break down my goals by different categories. And then I break it down from end of year goal all the way down to daily tasks. So the categories are end of year, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily. And I just write down specifically what I want to, uh, where I want to be at the end of the year and then break that down little by little. And this really helps me um, to actually achieve my goals, even if it's 70%, 80%. Um, and then on the left-hand side, underneath the category, I like to write down like what the uh, ultimate goal or state I want to get to in terms of those categories. So that's how I will be uh, using the next two pages. And then after that, I'm going to, so let's just say we flipped it over and then I would have uh, the next two pages dedicated to quarter, the first quarter tracker. Um, so right now I'm tracking my goals in the yearly overview, which is right here. And then on the left hand side, I just have, um, I typed out uh, my goals for that quarter. And then I use this page as a place to kind of track um, my goal progress and like basically just kind of marking down when I worked on my goals just to get a better idea. But it's not like perfect. So I want to actually use two pages to uh, track each quarter so I'm going to be doing that is on the left hand side I'm going to be tracking my goals and I can set up my page uh, to make it make more sense in terms of the goals I'm tracking uh, because obviously in the Hobonichi Kazan I'm limited to what Hobonichi Kazan has given me but in here the beauty of bullet journal is that you can do whatever you want and I will be kind of customizing that page to make it better work better for me and then on the right hand side, I'm going to be writing down um, notes in terms of like just summarizing that month and then seeing how it went. I'm probably going to be using that top as like a place to write down overall like quarterly goals and breaking that down further. And then the bottom is probably just going to be a place to kind of summarize um, where I want to be. Or I can just do what I did here and then have a fold out which I actually really liked because when I'm planning out the month I can just keep this open and reference this which was really nice so I might even create like an uh, flip like flap so that I can keep, like, just reference it when I'm planning out my month and weeks so that's how I'm going to be using the following pages so for page four or five is going to be quarter one so I'm using two pages per quarter so now once that's done, 
um, I'm going to be using probably, well, actually, I should probably add like one more page, which is page 18 for summarizing like how that year went. So So summarize that year and then this list will go from 19 to 25. So I'll be using page 19 through 25 as a place to write down lists. I know I think some, some of you call it collections. Um, it's basically kind of just like summarizing that year in terms of um, different categories. So I'll have probably a place to write down overall highlights, um, accomplishments like personal accomplishments, the list of books I read, and maybe like have a star system and uh, sterling is my son so i want to write down fun things that happen with him and then business related highlights i have uh, a few businesses so it'll be nice to kind of track accomplishments and like see how far i've come personal highlights um i don't know it's kind of repeating but it's just like not accomplishments but like things that happened and then other lists so it would just be a fun place to kind of summarize that year and not summarize the whole year but like write it as I go so at the end of the year I can kind of look at this and then see what was happening that year so that's that and speaking of books I mentioned in a previous video talking about uh, 2022 plans I said that I am going to combine um, my book journal and also sort of my personal journal with my planner so everything is going to be in one book so before I was I, I was using a A5, A6 size, well, I have it right here so I can show you. So I was using my A6 size Techo as a uh, book journal and I was tracking like my reading progress and which was really fun. Uh, reading progress, I was, um, I had a place to like put down the stickers for the um, books that I read. So instead of doing that i'm going to combine everything so in here i'm just going to have a section to put down like some uh, the book covers for the books that i read um as part of this um section which will be fun and then um page 26 through 27 is going to be my routine setup so let me show you what that looks like uh, in my current planner so this is my uh, December spread from 2020 and this is the planner for 2021 so they just give you this extra spread for December uh, I decided to use this as a place to write down my routine and I'm kind of just like <laughs> making do with whatever they gave me which is a monthly planner monthly spread but I kind of write down my monthly routine and also weekly schedule and then I also have a bill section and just monthly goals here but that's how I'm going to be using this page and I think I'll definitely change the layout so that it's going to work better for me. Um, so the first two pages will be routine setup and then after that I'm going to have two months on a page for future planning. So um, 28 is going to be on this side. So this is going to be page 28 and 29. So what that means is I'm going to have this top portion for one month and then this portion for one month. So when you open this spread, you're going to have one, two, three, four months um, at a glance. So this is going to be a place to write down like future appointments um, because I am, this is going to be my bullet journal and I'm not going to be setting up the entire planner. So I need a place with the dates already so I can just fill out like any future events that's going to happen. So that's what this uh, future planning section is going to look like. Um, so from 28 to 30 page 33 is going to be i think is that right yes 28 through 33 is going to be um two month per page for future planning so it'll be january february march and then april and at the end i'm going to have one page dedicated for the following year which is going to be 2023 and that's going to contain kind of dates um, for 2023 and also other plans that I think of for 2023. So when I'm setting up my planner for 2023, I just reference this page and you can kind of copy over uh, whatever that might be relevant. So that's page 34. 
And then page 30, starting from page 35 is going to be my monthly sections. That's the main like portion of this notebook. So I love Hobonichi Cousin because it has like so many different things contained in one planner. So you can really do anything you want with it. But what I don't like about it is the way it's set up. So in all of my previous bullet journals, I loved having the weeks the month and the daily together. So you have January, then you have the monthly spread, and then I had a tracker here, which I'm probably not going to use anymore because um, I'm tracking everything in the front. And then I have the week, week number, and I have one page for the weekly tasks, and then I just had daily pages. Um, so that's how I use my um, bullet journal like for that entire year in 2019 and then this was set up for 2020 but we all know what happened in 2020 so I didn't get to use it too much but um, it's still set up this exact same way where I have the cover page for January two monthlies and then tracker and then it's just weekly and then dailies so that's how I'm going to be setting this up exactly but the only difference is, well, let me go from the beginning first. So when you, the the monthlies are always going to start on the odd page, which means it's going to start from this page, um, which is something that I can control, which I love, because in Hobonichi Cousin, you can't really control where it starts, um, obviously because it's giving you one day per page. So you guys know that I create freebie calendars for each month. So that first page is going to be uh, my cover page for each month. So let me show you uh, what that looks like. So for example, let me show you the February one. So February, see what I'm saying? It starts from the left side, but I, pr I would prefer for it to start on the right side. And then I have March here. Then I have April. Then I have May, June. Then July, August, this is August, then I have up to September now, that's the latest one that I have, so this is September, which I, oh my god, I love this one so much, so I'm going to be printing that out um, for each month, and that's going to be my first like cover page, then flipping over, so let's just say that was a cover page, and flipping over, um, I'm going to have page 36 and 37, that's the monthly on two pages, so I'll draw that out. And then the way I'll be using my monthly on two pages is exactly how I'm using my monthly right now. This is a place for me to kind of pre-plan and write out all the different tasks, dates. Everything goes on this, this um, spread in terms of like breaking down goals, breaking down tasks, uh, appointments, everything goes on here. So this is where I pre-plan the entire month. So that's how I'm going to be using that. Then after flipping over that, it's going to be uh, weekly and daily notes. So the difference between this one and how I used to use my bullet journal is that um, I'm going to be setting up one page for So when you flip it over, this page is going to be weekly and I'll just have seven all seven days drawn out. And then that's where I'm going to be writing down like quick tasks I don't need to have a whole spread for weeklies. I realize that I prefer to use the daily notes. Um, and then afterwards, I'm going to be using the blank pages as a daily, like kind of brain dump, um, journaling, book journaling, writing down notes, to-do list, all of that. Um, so let me show you. So that's how I'm going to be using the daily pages. So I write down the dates and then just write down notes. I'll be decorating it exactly like this using that month um, stickers from my shop. So that's how I'm going to be using my um, pages as dailies, except that the weekly and the dailies will be attached together. So once I finish that, uh, each week, uh, the weekly is going to be here and then I'm going to have maybe seven pages of dailies or if I need more or if I need less, it's just completely up to me so that's that's really great because I can control 
uh, how many pages I will be using for that week. Um, that's just like, it's, it's going to be better for me because I don't have to worry about filling out exactly like 30 pages for that month. Um, even though there's no rule saying that I have to, it's just a like thing I kind of obsess over sometimes. Um, I try to be better with that, but you know, it doesn't always work out. Anyway, so it's just, it's just going to be more freeing to do it this way. Um, and I also realized that it's going to be much better to have the month and week and daily together. It's just easier to reference and you don't have to keep on going back and forth. And I feel like when you go back and forth, you end up copying and pasting stuff, which is not uh, efficient. So this, this is just going to be much better and freeing. Um, and I also realized that I don't need to have such a large space for weekly. So like here, this month, this week, I actually used it completely, but I don't always need that much space. So half the page will be perfect. So that's that. And I'll be setting that up continuously uh, month by month. Um, so roughly when I calculated this, um, I will need one page per week then, and there are 52 weeks in a year. So I'll have 52 sheets uh, and then three, five, uh, five, 365 days in a year and one page per day. Let's just assume I use one page per day, which is kind of the rate that I'm using. But, you know, obviously some days I use more, some days I don't use it, but it kind of evens out to be about one page per day. So added together, it will be 417 pages, which means that main portion of the planner is going to be 417 pages total. And then uh, that beginning portion of this was 34 pages, including the blank pages in the front. So that'll be 34 pages plus 417 pages. And then it'll give you 450 pages, 451 pages total. Then um, the entire notebook has 480 pages. So that means you have 29. I have 29 pages left. And I'll be using that just for random things. So um, I like to, in my bullet journal, I like to keep some um, reference information in the back. So for example, passwords, um, I don't write out the entire password, it's just like hints that I'm, only I would understand. And just other important information I need to reference right away, phone numbers and such. Um, so I'll be keeping that at the very end of the notebook. Um, and then, so let's just say this one, then I will start using it from the back. And let me see if I can show you this without giving away too much info. Um, so I just, oh, I can't really show you this. <laughs> Never mind. Um, let me see if I can show you uh, some parts of it. So I had a section like, this where it was just like blank notes and um i think i'm going to have just like some random notes in the back but i will be writing it from the end so i'll be writing it from uh 480 pages backwards so i'll be starting from the back instead of going from like front to back i'm writing it from back to front for these items so i'm going to have a section for password and reference information and as I accumulate them and then I'm going to have just a page for random notes that I don't know where to put but I know I want to keep it somewhere where I can see them all together and then I might have like a place as in index um, just to keep track of like if I do write something important in my daily um, pages in the monthly setup then I want to have an index for maybe where I save that and then um, Maybe I will also have like an index of like daily happenings, um, not for every day, but like if something popped up, I'll probably write like on um, this, this day, something happened so that I can kind of just see that as like an overview for the year. I think that would be really fun. Or maybe that goes in the front of the page where I have the blank pages. Um, and then I want to have some extra photos in the back as well, maybe. And then I have Anne, and it's uh, for my husband. Um, so like, I always like to write down some stupid things that he says or sweet things he says. And then I like to kind of keep that uh, somewhere so I can reference that. But basically this notebook, uh, this bullet journal for next year is going to be a one book for like all in one notebook where I have my journals, my planner, um, 
the planning uh, system and also um, book journal, like everything is in one place um, type of setup, which I'm really excited about. Um, I haven't done that last year and also this year, so it'll be kind of nice to go back to that one book system, which was kind of what I was using my bullet journal as, sort of. But at the time I was going to work every day, so I also didn't want to write down too much stuff because just in case I lose it or somebody else flips through them. But this year, or I mean next year, I want to attempt this all-in-one system. And the only other notebooks other than this A5 size is going that I'm going to be, to be using is the family journal like I showed you. And so I'll be using this blank sketchbook as my family journal and I'll be using that little tiny red planner as an on-the-go um, little planner to kind of keep track of like appointments and notes on the go uh, as I'm running errands because I'm obviously not going to carry my A5 size bullet journal around with me. That's just ridiculous. Um, it's just going to be too heavy and too crazy um, to flip through all those pages. And I also don't want it to get dirty, so that's another thing. Uh, but anyway, so that's going to be my setup for next year. And I'm still going to be using my A5 size, um, not A5 size, A6 size, five-year journal. That's, um, I mean, I've been using it since 2019. So next year is going to be the fourth year. And this is like an amazing, uh, any type of five-year journal is just going to be amazing because you get to read the previous year's entries. And it's just so much fun to see like how your life has changed or like the even if it didn't change like the fun things that you you wrote down that you no longer remember but it's just like nice to kind of revisit those days uh those memories so i'm going to be continuing with this this five-year journal for next year this is mostly for um my son and the things that my son does so it's been really fun to see how much he has grown um so i'll be using that anyway so that's Pretty much my setup for next year and this this setup is probably going to stay pretty much the same but um i'm going to think over this for the next few months and i'm probably going to be doing a setup with me video um in december maybe i don't want to set it up too early then i get too like anxious to start using the planner so um, I'll be setting that up in December so look out for that for sure so thank you so much for watching this video and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video if you liked my video please uh, click like and subscribe and you'll see more content from me um, so I'll see you next week bye